Thanks everyone for joining me today. Today we're going to be talking about matrix mixes, what they are, what they're used for, and the right way to set one up. And we're going to use churches as, as an example for how this can be used to make your broadcast mix and your live in-house mix both work together for the best result for your service. So if you end up finding this video useful, give it a like, uh, subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell to see the next video, or better yet, share this with somebody else who might be running sound of their church, and this might be helpful to them, or even somebody running another band or facility that might find this useful. Now, first of all, a matrix mix, for the longest time, I had no idea what they were used for or why it would be helpful. I was only dealing with a main mix, so it wasn't a big deal. But a matrix mix is basically a mix of mixes. Now, why this is useful, imagine you're in your church service, you're in the worship center, and the praise band volume is here. Worship music is up here, and then someone comes up to make an announcement or they're preaching. That level's actually way down here as far as the volume coming out of the main PA in the sanctuary and that makes a lot of sense nobody wants to listen to the preacher at the same you know loud volume of the worship music the problem is if you just copy this mix or you send this mix to your broadcast people who are watching a recording that broadcast streaming or somewhere else in the church on a tv they're not gonna be able to hear the preacher they're not gonna be able to hear the announcement mic if they left a volume at a good volume for the worship, they're going to be constantly reaching for the volume. So how do you level these two things out? Or in this case, bring the announcement mics and the bumper music up to the same general volume level as the worship music. You do this by using a matrix mix. You want to combine your main mix with a second stereo mix that adds these things, preacher mic, announcement mic, bumper music to the mix uh, so that your house sound guy can still control the thing musically, but you don't end up with a super low announcement volume. Uh, I have here basically uh, X32 Edit pulled up just to sort of show you how this works. I'm not going to run audio through it, but at least this can give you an idea of how to set this up. What you're looking at right now uh, is uh, my, uh, just a basic main mix setup, 18 channels, 16 channels of instruments and Vocals, I actually don't have any singers in this, but that's a, it's not important for this. We're going to be focusing on this, this uh, pastor mic on channel 15, the announcement mic on channel 16, and then our iPod left and right, which is the music that's just going to be running all the time. A lot of churches do this just to have bumper music accessible before and after service. That would be, in this instance, running to a stereo link of channel 17 and 18. So the way, the way to get this set up is it's pretty straightforward. Actually, you, you want to have over here on your auxiliary mix, I'm sorry, on your uh, bus mixes, get to them here, your bus mix, you want to have what I like to call an ad mix. And it's a stereo mix as well, a stereo bus. Um, in this case, on bus one and two, it's an ad mix that you're going to put your announcement mics, much more of those and your bumper music into, and then combine it with your main mix. The reason why we want to do this and not just create a whole separate mix is you still want to have your house sound engineer, the person running your mix in the in the sanctuary, be able to make musical changes that reflect to the broadcast. A lot of a lot of churches set up a totally separate mix for broadcast, but the problem is if the house sound engineer has a change that they need to make musically, they see something change, etc. They make that change, it doesn't go out to the broadcast and it needs to. You know, if your guitar player starts to need to be brought up or down, if you have a singer that now is taking the lead on a different song, and so your house sound guy makes that mix change, the easy way is to get that to reflect in the broadcast. This is the way to make that happen because your matrix is still a combination of that main mix. So as you see here in X32 Edit, what we're going to do is go to Mix Bus 1 and 2, and, of course, in the software here, you see all these faders go blue, meaning these are the send levels of the input channels to bus one and two, our ad stereo mix. So in this example, I'm going to bring uh, the pastor preacher mic up here, announcement mic, 
and say you know quite a bit more of that bumper music for broadcast purposes. So now we have basically a stereo mix that's just pastor mic, announcement mic, and some additional music that we're going to add to the main mix in our matrix. So we have that set up. We're going to move over here, and I've set up uh, what I called a cast mix. That's my matrix mix that's going to go to the broadcast and the recording uh, and the other, for instance, TVs that are in the church where someone may be watching the service as well. And the way to get your main mix and your ad mix together into this matrix, you want to sel actually select the main channel here and then go over to the sends. You'll notice right here I'm sending 0 dB. I'm sending the full volume of the main mix to the broadcast. Sending it to the broadcast, and at the same time, I'm going to go select my ad mix, and I'm going to bring that up to Unity. What I've basically done is create a combination of my ad mix and my main mix to go to this cast broadcast. Now, after this is done, you can actually, if, to, to tweak how much of these mics and the music and stuff you're adding to your broadcast, you can just go back to uh, your, your bus mix over here. And, and just tweak these individual levels in your ad mix. You'll notice I'm mixing the ad mix right now. I can add these to the ad mix to tweak. So if I have a little too much pastor now in the broadcast matrix, I can just go here to my ad mix and bring it down. If I'm not hearing enough of the background music, I can bring it up. Uh, one of the other things I like to do real quick is I like to add, if you have an ambient reverb or something like that, a little a little ambience you're using in a house, I like to add quite a bit of that, especially if it's stereo and wide. I like to add quite a bit of that to the, to the ad mix as well to get that into the matrix. A, a little extra ambience really helps that broadcast mix sound live. It sort of brings the, the, the folks watching that the broadcast into the room a little bit, gives it a little bit of ambient reverb that you don't need in the house but it's great for the broadcast the way you do that is you run over to your return in this case i called one of my uh, fx returns ambient left ambient right i'm still mixing my ad mix so i just bring that ambient return into the ad mix which basically gives your matrix a lot more of the ambient reverb than is coming into the house so i hope that uh hope that's helped helps you get started with matrix mixing, the reasons to use it and kind of how to get one set up. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment, uh, you know, contact me some other way. If you think I missed something, please leave that in there as well. And share this video. If you think that any of your friends running sound are going to get any value out of it and be able to get started with mixing, uh, using matrix mixes to mix their church broadcasts as well. In an upcoming video, I'm going to show you, by the way, in an upcoming video, I'm going to show you how to do this with a console that doesn't have matrix mixing. There's some other techniques where you can use something similar to automate your mixing and your broadcast and house mix uh, without a console that has matrix mixing built in. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.